Hi everyone, this is Swati from India Hikes and you're watching Trek with Swati. Today we're not talking about trekking in the Himalayas. In fact, we're not talking about trekking anywhere in India. We're talking about trekking in Switzerland. Recently, I was invited by Switzerland Tourism to represent India Hikes, trek in Switzerland, come back here and share what it's like to trek in Switzerland. Now, you might wonder why I promote trekking in Switzerland, but you will be surprised that very, very few people actually trek in Switzerland. A lot of the locals over there trek, maybe neighboring countries, people go there and trek. Uh, but very few people, especially from India, go and trek in Switzerland. Most people were very surprised to see an Indian trekking in the back country of Switzerland and especially an Indian woman, they were all quite surprised. So I think we should change that. Trekking in India is growing and we should show that to the world as well. So next time you're traveling to Switzerland, make sure you go trekking there and not just go to the touristy places. So today I'm going to tell you about four great treks in Switzerland that you can do on your own. I did these treks myself on a seven day visit. I did one trek every day and I'm picking out four of those best treks for you to do on your own and I'll tell you how to go about it. Hi everyone! My body is really wondering what are you doing with your life? Here at the uh, Frankfurt airport right now. It's a two hour train journey. This is Swati from India Hike saying hi all the way from Switzerland. The first trek I'm talking about is a trek to Blumlisalkhuta. This is how the Swiss pronounce it. Uh, it is basically a mountain hut, which is Hutter in German, at the base of this mountain called Blumlisalp. So this mountain climbs to around 12,000 feet, but the mountain hut is at around 9,000 something feet. So I started my trek the very next day after I landed. This was my first introduction to trekking in Switzerland. So I went to this place called Reichenbach and right from there I started. I've been hiking for the past couple of hours and I'm going to continue on the trail now and I will take you through Switzerland through my hikes. What I really liked about this trek is that within a span of six hours, it takes you through so much variety. I started through dense pine forests, not too dense, but a really pretty forest with nice light streaming into the trees. Uh, there were small rivulets that I had to skip, hop and jump over. And once you exit this forest line, you're immediately welcomed by these beautiful grasslands. Very typical of Switzerland, where you see in the postcards, just huge grasslands, beautiful huts over there with sheep and cow grazing. So you walk through this grassland for some time and then get on top of a ridge. So the entire rest of the trek is on a ridge walk. So you, within a few hours, you're out of the grasslands, you're into the alpine section, then you hit the snow line and then you even see a glacier right there next to you. So the mountain hut is almost at the base of the glacier. In fact, the back of the mountain hut, you get out of it and you're on the glacier. That's how beautifully adventurous it is. It's in a relentless climb and the last stretch is a complete staircase and it continues all the way. Oh, I don't know if you can see but it's complete staircase and that's the hut over there. So, um, they say it's a four and a half hour climb. I've already taken uh, five hours and I think I'll take another 20 minutes to get to the top. Uh, this is, I'm kind of in the fold of the mountain so sun is behind. So there's no sun and it's bitterly cold. My hands are turned red. But very rewarding climb. I hope the view from the top is as, I mean, I hope it's more than what I see around me right now because I'm hoping to get view of the other side as well. Having said that, it's not a very easy trek because you're climbing around 4,500 feet within a day. It's almost like doing the entire Kedar Kantha trek within a day. So you need to be fit and don't go by what the Swiss people say, they are all extremely fit. So they marked this as a pretty easy moderate trek uh, and they said it will take four hours, but it took me six, six and a half hours to get to the top. It was almost at sunset that I reached the top. I'm almost at the top and for the first time I can see the hut in which that I'm going to stay. 
So this is a trek especially known for the sunset from the top, the views of the mountains around. You get to see Jungfrau, which is one of the big peaks of Switzerland. And you get to see a very nice view of the Bernese Alps around because this is in the southern part of Switzerland. So this is a very nice introduction to trekking in Switzerland. And if you have to choose out of all these treks, just one trek, I would say do this trek in Switzerland. It's as close to a Himalayan trek as you can get, yet gives you a lot of variety of trekking in Switzerland. So I would highly recommend doing Blumnissal Puta. The next trek I'm going to recommend in Switzerland is a trek to Lake Oceanen. Now there are two routes or many routes actually to get to this lake. I took the route all the way from Lumlisal Pat, from the mountain top, it was a complete descent all the way to the lake. And from the lake, there is a further down descent all the way to this place called Kandersteg. So Kandersteg is like a small uh, village or settlement at the base of this valley. So you can even climb from that Kandersteg all the way to the lake or you can do this reverse route. So there are many routes uh, to the same place in Switzerland. It's one of the beauties of trekking in Switzerland. You can mix and match and do a trek from absolutely anywhere to anywhere. So make use of that entire uh, infrastructure and connectivity in Switzerland to trek to different places. I cannot explain my smile but you have to see this. So about this lake, I thought it was one of the most memorable experiences in Switzerland because I was looking forward to seeing these turquoise blue waters that we see so much on the internet when it comes to Switzerland. And this was exactly one of those lakes. The water was extremely blue, surrounded by beautiful pine trees and there was a big cliff on all sides. So it was a huge lake, uh, reminded me a lot of our Kashmir lakes like Gatsar, but much bigger than that. In fact, it would take almost two, two and a half hours to do a parikrama of the lake. Um, on the other hand, I don't know if it's possible to do a parikrama all the time because there are some rockfall zones and things like that. But you can easily spend around four or five hours beside the lake. Um, there are lots of activities in summer. You can go swimming, you can go fishing, you can go uh, boat rides in the lake. Um, you can also go on these toboggan rides which they do in Switzerland in summer. In winter, the lake is completely frozen and you can go ice skating on the lake. So I would recommend a summer experience or sometime in September, uh, August, something like that, because that's when you get to see the blue waters of the lake. And I would also recommend maybe trekking one way uh, and from the lake, there is a cable way all the way down to Kandersteg. So that's a very nice experience that you can add on to the trek. So you should definitely do that. I am sitting in a um, uh, gondola, I think. This is not a regular cable car. Uh, it's a smaller cable car and I'm flying downhill. The third trek I want to tell you about in Switzerland is the Lochberg Schudramper trek. Now, I really don't know if I'm pronouncing these right because all of these words are in German. But this is a trek that most people in Switzerland would have heard of. It's a very classic trail in Switzerland. It stretches for around 26 kilometers. But the good thing about it is that there are a lot of entry points and exit points. So what this trail is, is that it's laid just above the Lochberg railway track. So it is not a trek that takes you very far away from civilization. It is very much in the heart of civilization. Yet it is a trail that's going slightly above everything else. It's on the side, you're traversing the mountainside throughout. So you have this beautiful view of what is happening at the bottom where all the settlements are. And you're slowly going through small, small villages in and out. So I really like this because it gave me very unique experiences in Switzerland. Nobody will show you these, this side of Switzerland postcards. For instance, this trail is an extremely dry trail. That grassland side of Switzerland, you'll not see any of that here. It's a south facing trail, so it gets hot sun from morning to evening. So it's a very dry trail and there are lots of lizards and reptiles on this trek. In fact, there were sections where every step I took, some 50 lizards were getting out of my way. So it was a very unique experience that way. Uh, there are also lots of tunnels on this trek very very unique uh, because it is tunnels that have been bored into the mountainside dating back all the way to 1900s so it has a lot of history as well this entire trail third was there was this beautiful hanging bridge almost thousand feet above the river which was flowing at the bottom and this is a, a railway bridge that is still in use so when you're walking on the bridge it's not a surprise if a train comes whizzing past you and the entire bridge is rattling so it was a very nice experience that way 
and I started this trek from a place called Auserberg, which is this remote village um, in Switzerland. Hardly around five, six hundred people live in this village, and I got to see a very nice countryside. How people live, what kind of homes they have, what they eat, what they do for an occupation. I got to see that very different side of Switzerland. So I got in at Auserberg, and I got down at this place called Rhone. But you can do this trek from anywhere to anywhere. There's easy trail connectivity. All you need to do is get on top of the trail, walk alongside the railway track, and come back down. So I would really recommend this trail for a very different experience of Switzerland. Within a day, you can do it and get out of there. Another trek I'm going to recommend in Switzerland is a trek from Bel Alp to Rieder Alp. Now there is a slightly previous part one also to this trek where you can trek from Blatten to Bel Alp. You can also do this trek in the completely reverse direction. But what I really liked is from Blatten to Bel Alp, the hike is through one of the most beautiful pine forests I've seen. These trees are around 900 to 1000 years old and you're going to be trekking in the heart of these trees. So it's a very short hike for around 1 hour, 2 hours something like that, but all the way to Bel Alp. So I'm at Bel Alp and I'm a bit stumped right now because this here is my hotel. Um and this here on this From Bel Alp to Rieder Alp is a longer trek which will take you almost six, six and a half hours. But what is the most flabbergasting experience is you are trekking right next to a glacier. Not just any glacier, this is the Ehlich Glacier, which is one of the longest glaciers in the Alps uh, with a length of around 23 kilometers. And this stretches right in front of you. So when you're trekking from Bel Alp to Rieder Alp, you actually go above this glacier on a hanging bridge. It's a very scary experience, but uh, something you'll remember for life. And after you cross this bridge, you're again entering a very beautiful pine forest all the way to Rieder Alp. So this entire trek is a highly adventurous one because it takes you so close to a glacier. I don't think in India or in the Himalayas, you get to see glaciers at such close quarters. And you do get to see this over here. So just for that experience, I would really recommend this trek. Almost every place in Switzerland looks like this and you kind of get used to the perfection, you get used to this amazing landscape and especially at this time of the year, there's this beautiful orange in the grass as well. The final recommendation I have for you is not really a trek but it's a bit of a mountaineering ascent. This is something we did as part of an all women's challenge where we climbed this peak which is a 4000 meter peak. It's called Mount Breithorn and it's in the Pennine Alps on the border of Switzerland and Italy. In fact, it's very close to Matterhorn and you get to see Matterhorn right from the base all the way to the top when you're climbing this uh, peak. Beginning our walk towards Breithorn. This behind me that you see is Breithorn. So I would really recommend this because uh, it's not a very difficult climb. It's considered one of the easiest summit climbs or mountaineering climbs in these Alps. And you can easily do it along with a guide. It is a bit of a technical climb because you are continuously climbing on a glacier. There are crevices where there is a deep down. Um, you can see icicles formed and it's completely blue and deep and dark down in there. So you do need a guide. You do need some technical skills. You will be harnessed. You will be wearing the right boots for this climb. But if you find somebody who can take you as a guide all the way to Mount Brighthorn, it's completely worth it. It's one experience that you'll remember for life. At least I know I will. So that is uh, that brings me to the end of this video on the best treks that you can do in Switzerland on your own. I have made this list from my experience in Switzerland where I went there for a week and trekked every single day. I really want to go back there and trek so many more trails because I know that I haven't touched even 1% of Switzerland. So I hope you get a chance to do that when you go to Switzerland. Don't go to just the touristy places like Interlaken and Zurich. Do that, but also go trekking in Switzerland. You'll see a completely different side of it.
So I'll be making more videos with tips on trekking in Switzerland. I have some really good tips that I used when I was trekking over there. I also want to tell you how different it is trekking in Switzerland and in India. So I'm going to make another video on that as well. So make sure you hit subscribe. Make the make sure you hit the notify button as well so that you get to know when we publish these next videos. You can also follow us on our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are constantly sharing updates from the mountains. We'll be back with more not only from Switzerland. but also from trekking in india i'm swati from india hikes and you're watching trek with swati